steel building rears skyward, a new site on the banks of the Waikato. This great frame of the Mercer coal steam plant is the shape of a new power station that will generate electricity from superheated steam. Construction work has been going on since January this year. Soon the cage of steel will be walled and roofed and foundations ready to hold the generators. By next August, two of the boilers powering the generators will be in operation. The Mercer scheme is something new in our power plans. Water heated in the twisting mesh of the boiler pipelines will be used as steam power and most of the coal will travel to the station by cableway. With 700 men on the job, the project is pushing ahead fast. The station will be in operation by July 58 and completed in 1959, producing power from a new source. At Atiyamuri, one more bucket of concrete takes a high ride over the job. Joining the string of dams along the Waikato, Atiyamuri Hydro Station is another project in which all the North Island has a stake. The work is almost at the halfway mark. The dam wall rises white and sheer from the old riverbed excavation and it won't be long before it's fronting a man-made lake. Bucket after bucket of concrete crosses the cableway and spills out onto the dam base. Layer upon layer is spread and settled and the huge wall rises up steadily. No time is wasted. Hundreds of tons of concrete are laid every day. Six hundred men are working three shifts a day at Atiyamuri, hammering, drilling, chipping and digging. As at Mercer, the job is on time, and in two years, both stations will be pumping out power for the north. Wairaki, only a few miles from Atiyamuri. Here, geothermal bores are an awesome sight as steam hurls upwards. This underground power, once just a tourist attraction, is being tapped, and natural energy will run the generating station of Wairaki. Through pipelines, steam from the bores will travel a couple of miles to the powerhouse now being built. At the powerhouse, steam will generate electricity. Geothermal power may solve many of our problems. Building at Wairaki is ahead of schedule and it won't be long before the powerhouse is finished. The station will be operating by mid-1958. From the Waikato River, water will be pumped to the powerhouse for cooling purposes. Stage one of the big Wairaki plan is steaming ahead well. Boars thunder across the valley. These roaring mouths in the earth are another sign of New Zealand's search for more electric power. Guns boom out, saluting the arrival of New Zealand's new Governor General. Wellington has turned on one of its special days, but that doesn't deter hardy souls from gathering at the wharf for their first glimpse of Lord and Lady Cobham. First off are the Cobham children. Sarah and Lucy, the twins, that's two. Nicholas and Richard, numbers three and four. Christopher, five. Catherine, Juliet and John bring the compliment to eight. All are present and correct as they wave goodbye to shipboard friends. As they step ashore, Lord and Lady Cobham are officially welcomed to New Zealand by the Chief Justice. Lord Cobham's appointment is a fitting one. He's from a family long associated with this country. While Daddy inspects the Guard of Honour, Nicholas and the twins stare solemnly at the camera, a little overwhelmed by all the fuss and bustle. Then it's off to their new home. Not one, not two, not three, but four cars are taking Lord Cobham's little cricket team to Government House. At the Cenotaph, a wreath is laid to the memory of the servicemen who lost their lives in both world wars. And so we have a new vice-regal family in New Zealand. We hope they'll be happy here and that before they leave us, the weather clears up. Good planning has made school a welcoming place these days. That institutional atmosphere has gone. In the large, attractive classrooms, children are taught more informally in groups, which makes lessons more interesting for them. 
In all ways, classrooms are tailored to fit the children's school activities. Fiberglass roof lighting gives a better light to work by, and the new seats are designed both for comfort and to improve posture. Yet with all these improvements, the new types of school plan being used are reducing costs. It all boils down to good design. Today's school layout has taken on a different character. With the block system of school building, rooms are grouped for convenience and to harmonize with the surroundings. We've come a long way since the 70s. The new primary schools vary in design from one district to another, but all have the amenities and space necessary for health and good schooling. In the post-primary field, practical education is also well catered for, and schools have fine laboratories and specialist rooms with the most up-to-date equipment. Nowadays, cookery bays are just like the kitchen at home. Thirty new post-primary schools have been built in the last few years, and eight more will be opened next year. New Zealand's cities and towns are bursting at the seams. In Wellington, new housing areas are sprawling out in all directions, and school building has had to be stepped up. In some cases, it has been necessary to occupy classrooms as they're finished. This school will be full of